Welcome to another Dash GIS video. We're going to be talking about Dash GIS as well as a little history on CalCat, the makers of Dash GIS. So who is CalCat? We were formed back in 1987, that's 36 years ago, um, specializing in GIS implementations from the OGC, the Open GIS Consortium, which all the major manufacturers belong to, Esri, Autodesk, Safe Software, other, other various data formats that we do. And we're data stewards. We help edit, maintain uh, accurate data for you. We've also developed specialized applications for maintenance management, code enforcement, 811 that takes the stream that comes in from the call before you dig people and automatically put it into your GIS. And also visualization of the tons and tons of uh, closed caption TV video of sewer pipes getting access to all that. And then one of our more philosophical things that we do and believe in very much is using the systems that are already in there in the GIS instead of replacing them. That means linking the GIS to the permitting softwares, to accounting software, to code enforcement to other maintenance management systems out there. There's no sense in replacing a perfectly good system when you can just link and leverage the data that's in there. And that gets to our mission, that is to provide tools to help agencies be more effective at a reasonable price. We looked around there, had done tons of implementations and all the big boy, uh, big name, uh, softwares out there and realized that for special districts, the cost was really out there or would be so burdensome as to uh, not be useful for them. So we made Dash GIS to be an affordable solution for special districts and small cities. We never hold your data hostage. Anytime you want it, it's yours because it's your data. Removing the mystique surrounding GIS. We don't make it a mystery. We don't create overly complicated data models. We make streamlined, efficient data models that are understandable and make the data work for you. Some of our clients here, you can see over the 36 years, there's way more than this. So what kind of a GIS does a special district need? That's what we're going to explore in this topic today. Because I've seen over the last 35 plus years that I've been doing this, where districts have overpaid, got overpromised, and ended up with software that they were paying a huge amount of money for, paid a lot of money to get trained on, and then they didn't know how to operate it especially when that one person that went to all that technical training left because they had all this great training and somebody else offered them a higher paying job. So we're going to explore that today. On a philosophical level, again, the GIS should work for you, not the other way around. It shouldn't be this big burden that becomes a cost center that every department or uh, division has to contribute huge amounts of money away from getting the job done to maintain the GIS. It should help you do your job, not become a burden. And you shouldn't have to change the way you work because of the GIS it wants you to do it one way when you've been doing it another way forever. The GIS should use industry standard data. The Open Geospatial Consortium is the standard data writers of what data should look like, how it should be open and used by everybody. And virtually everybody's of any note, their data is open and accessible if 
Shape, GeoDatabase, Google, Oracle Spatial, uh, protocols like JSON and REST came through, came out of there. And what it does, it allows you to exchange and consume data from other people. Special districts can get data from the county, from the cities that are within their district, if it's that way, even from the state or other utility companies. It allows you to beg, borrow, or otherwise obtain uh, data because it doesn't make sense to duplicate effort that somebody else is already doing. And you should use data that's obtained and in, in, instead of shoving it into an overly complicated cookie cutter, one size fits all data structure. Each special district has a lot of things in common with other special districts, but they have a lot of times things that are unique to them in the way they work. So you do not want to have a one size fits all. In these days of thinner budgets and greater transparency, the pricing of the GIS should have a predictable and understandable model. The per user model is dead. As people come in and out of the agency or as we change who is in there by email and all of that, that unique identifier, that can be a nightmare for anybody managing who gets access and who doesn't, and then renewals are just become chaos. We've seen where one agency, the software was loaded on a central accessible server and had a little machine that anytime anybody downloaded the software and installed it on their computer, it used a tracking system and boom, at the end of the month, they got a bill. And so interns and other people just exploring that never were intended to use the GIS caused a fee that the agency was beholden to pay. So you don't want to do that. A single price for the entire agency that is simple and predictable is the way to go and a price that delivers value. It should be enterprise level, meaning all the tools are there to do your job. Not missing an essential tool, so you have to go and fire up Excel or something else or you know copy off a database and then do some manipulation. They should be there. And then one of my pet peeves is when I see a GIS in, implemented in a way that you have 15 different queries that you pick from that really are all the same kind of query. And to be more specific, like a parcel. You know, we want to see parcels by, find a parcel by owner name, by zoning, by uh, address or situs address or a myriad of other things, APN number. Why should we have a drop list of find parcel by situs and mailing address or mailing address and last name? Why should we have another one on that list that says find parcel by uh, APN and situs address or who knows what? Why not build a dialog box that has all those variables in it, situs, mailing, Last owner, last name, zoning, size, whatever you want to have in that dialog box, you fill in the parameters that you want to have, and boom, you find your query. You build it on the fly. No programming needed. You just put in the data you want to find, and boom, it comes up. That's enterprise level versus a elementary level differential there. It should also have tasks that are or extensions that allow you to access geo-referenced closed caption TV for sewers. You should be able to link to or have in it a work order maintenance management system, pressure line isolation, where, okay, we've got a leak or a rupture here and it's 2 a.m., what valves do I need to turn off to isolate this pipe? Gravity system path tracing the same way. We've got non-point-point solutions. 
you need to find out where it is or where it's going to go. Call before you dig is just an awesome thing I've seen. The GIS should be available anywhere, the field or office, because the work doesn't begin or end at the front door for a special district. The guys out in the field need to have that information. The guys in the office need to have that information. And on computers, tablets, phones, whatever form factor you have or need. Because the work doesn't stop, like I said. That's why we built Dash GIS to, to solve problems for special districts. It's a hosted enterprise GIS service that provides access to your data 24 seven. We also have implementations for agencies that want to host it internally, and that is available. You can access it via the internet with no client download needed. Uh, having them download modules and stuff in, onto your computer or form factor just doesn't fly anymore. All the tools that you expect are there to get the job done, and we have the power of Google Maps and Google Street View built into it, that it is saves you money and the responsibility of having to keep an aerial image up to date or flying the city or flying the district, whatever. And it's built on the fastest mapping engine available, Map Server, from the OpenGIS Consortium. It's fast. You get to see your information in weeks instead of months or years, like we've seen so many times. An agency will contract with a company, and then it's months and months and months of time before they get to have a return on their investment. Dash uses all the industry standard data, so that reduces Translate, translation, conversion, and time and setup costs. You can consume the data that you either have gotten from the county or other people in the in your area, or a lot of engineering firms. They've got your pipes and other infrastructure already in a CAD or GIS format. You can consume that directly. And the biggest thing that Dash GIS doesn't need any technical classroom training. We typically do a seminar uh, series for the entire district in, in an afternoon and everybody's an expert. DASH is focused. The reports and searches are tailored the way you want it. The, you pay for only the extensions you desire. If you have DASH GIS and you want pressure line up isolation, you pay once and you've got the tool. Same thing with the CMMS, the work order maintenance management system. You pay for it once and your monthly subscription does not increase. It stays at the $4.95 a month. No complicated data models that make things fragile. Our data models are fast, efficient, and robust. And it's flexible because it uses all the industry data types you can take in data from different sources and it all integrates together. Reports and searches, like I said, are customized to meet your needs and it works on any internet connected device. Some of the extensions I've talked about, dashboard for the manager, so you can see things like open work orders, closed work orders in the last 30 days, ones that are coming up, all those kinds of things in a quick, efficient bar or line or chart. The maintenance management system activity reporter is a light version of maintenance management. The sewer TV, where you click on a pipe, you get to see the video and the pipe uh, fault representations of sags and cracks and all of those things are represented spatially along that pipe as well and gravity system path tracing and, and pressure line isolation I've already talked about. Dash GIS is budgetable. 
one monthly subscription price per site for an agency. So all your internal staff and field staff can interact with the data, whether you've got four people, 40 people, or 400 people for $4.95 a month. It's hosted on the Microsoft Azure cloud server, so you don't have to worry about security and keeping all the patches and all that operating system stuff up to date, which takes up IT staff time. There's no unpredictable per user charges or hits. It's not based on that. It's one flat fee a month. You don't have to purchase the software and hardware and training again. And the extension modules are a one-time cost. So the takeaways today, are Dash GIS is an enterprise level GIS. It's a low cost alternative to the big name software out there. And it's backed by a company that has over 36 years of GIS experience. For more information, you can go to dashgis.com. We have an FAQ and the top 10 reasons to buy Dash GIS, and we also have a YouTube channel. All you have to do is search for Dash GIS. You can give us a call at 800-617-4447 or 800-617-4GIS, or go to dashgis.com slash contact to request a free consultation.